So you can use here, not just, you know, we've seen two options. One was color, and then we said color it based on a factor. We've said shape. You can also use lots of other things, you know, fill, uh, etc., etc. Now, some of them go with certain things. You know, for example, many of the aesthetics that you put here, uh, X and Y will go with, uh, with many different uh, kinds of uh, geoms but some of the other things may not go with all geoms. So, you know, you have to be careful about the combinations that you use here. Okay, uh, so suppose I want all the points to be plotted not in different colors, but in just one color, right? We want all the points to be plotted as blue, right? Now, how would you do that? Notice the difference between the previous one and this one. Here I'm saying geom point mapping equals aesthetics x equals display y equals highway and aesthetics ended here. Then outside of aesthetics, in geom point, I'm saying color equals blue, okay? This is very different from where we had color in the earlier slide. In the earlier slide, color was inside of the aesthetics, right? That means that uh, we wanted every point to be plotted in a color depending on a particular variable. So we said color equals class, right? So we said, depending on the class of the car, give it a different color. But if you want a fixed color, then don't put it inside the aesthetics, put it outside. Okay, so that's what uh, we did that here. But if you by mistake put it inside, as I have done here, x equals display, y equals highway, color equals blue, that's now sitting inside the aesthetic. Okay, so now what you're really telling it is, I want the color to depend upon something, and what that something it depends upon is called blue. It makes no sense at all. Okay, so it said, okay, uh, it's a fixed value, it's not a variable. If you put it inside the aesthetic, it should be a variable, but it's fixed. So it's just showing you a meaningless legend and then it colored all of them. It just picked one random color and colored all of them with that, okay? This actually makes no sense whatsoever, okay? So be careful where you put the color aesthetic, not just the color, uh, you, you have to be careful whether you put some something inside the aesthetic or you put it outside the aesthetic. Okay, so that's, I'm just showing you the two different versions of the same thing, right? So here, color is part of geom point. Here, color is part of the aesthetic, right? So if it's part of the aesthetic, then uh, of course, this particular thing, putting a fixed thing here doesn't make any sense. And we saw that the plot came out that way. Typically, when you put it inside the aesthetic, you will have one of the variables put here, not the constant value blue. Okay, so take a look at that and try out something. Okay, now try to map a continuous variable to color and see what happens, right? So for example, let's do this, right? So I said color equals a highway mileage, right? Highway, HWY tells for each car what its highway mileage is. Now earlier we had said color equals class, which was a factor, it was a categorical variable okay it was a discrete variable not a continuous variable but here highway is a continuous variable it's numeric if you do that then it still works right so it created a continuum of colors right from light to dark where the light shows high highway mileage dark shows low highway mileage and it plotted the points accordingly okay now this is typically not a recommended practice because uh, it's it's kind of difficult to see the shades, at least for some people. You know, 10% of the people have difficulty in uh, in seeing subtle shades of color, subtle shades of variation of color, and in fact, even, under, uh, you know, distinguishing between different colors and so on. So because of that, you might want to avoid something like this, right? But sometimes, uh, you know, this might also make some, make sense to do, right? For example, if the uh, point, uh, you know, the, the, the scatter plot points are bigger, then it might be easier to see the sh variation in the colors, uh, in the shade of the color. So what happens if you map the same variable to multiple aesthetics? So let's see an example. So this time, we have mapped, you know, X and Y like before, displacement. Y is this time instead of the highway mileage, we're taking the city mileage. Color equals class. So we have taken the class of the vehicle and said, give each vehicle of a different class a different color. 
and all vehicles of the same class give them the same color. And then we also said size equals class. In other words, we said to give the size of the point also depending upon the class of uh, the car. Okay, so map different. Uh, of course, this is a little tricky thing, right? Because class is just you know uh, two seater, uh, etc., compact, etc., etc., and size obviously is something uh, where large and small and things have a certain meaning, right? So here we are doing a slightly dodgy mapping of uh, uh, just a pure categorical variable with something that is an ordered thing. Size is an ordered thing, okay? So it's going to do the job for us, right? So you see here different points have different sizes depending upon the, the class, right? Uh, but it's going to generate a warning actually. You'll see the warning. If, if you run it, you'll see the warning. But the key point is you can map the same variable to multiple aesthetics. It works exactly as we would expect it to work. So that's nice. Uh, so that's uh, another example we are doing here. Uh, color equals trans, shape equals trans, trans being transmission. This is, uh, uh, you know, this, this will also, this will work fine. Uh, it will generate the warning because, you know, only six, uh, the transmission has many more than six uh, options and we already know that shape uh, there are only six possible shapes that work okay so you'll have to play around and adjust some of these things but uh, you can map multiple uh, the same variable to different aesthetics that's perfectly fine okay so now uh, going back to our uh, of course in when we did all of these things uh, by adding additional dimensions through color or shape or size uh, we applied Tufti's principles of showing many variables. Okay. The other thing about Tufti, as I had said earlier, is show comparisons. So let's see that. Right. So now what we want is uh, just like we did when we did uh, box plots, where we said uh, for cars of different number of cylinders, we want to have different box plots. Similarly, we may plot subsets of the data. Okay. So for example, see here. We may want this. We may want for all the show me a scatter plot of displacement versus highway mileage, but show me a separate scatter plot for cars of each class. Okay, so we have the earlier all we saw was a scatter plot of the entire data set, but now we want to break it up, uh, break it up into separate scatter plots for cars of different classes. Okay. That's a comparison, right? So, for example, of course, this clearly tells us that there are very few two-seater cars in our data, okay? But it shows us that uh, the drop in highway mileage by displacement is pretty sharp for subcompact cars, not very sharp for pickups, okay, or for SUVs and so on, okay? So, you're able to, and in fact, for, uh, for mid-sizes, you see a kind of... Uh, a curve where it drops and then starts increasing sort of okay so you have all kinds of uh, different things the point is when you see comparisons you're able to get uh, or at least there is scope for us to generate additional hypotheses and additional understanding depending on the data so how would you do this how would you uh, ask uh, ggplot to do uh, do this it's very simple as you can see here and I, when i introduced ggplot i had said that you can add layer by layer commands right so that's what you're doing here so the first part of it you understand how to generate the scatter plot very simple we just said mapping equals aesthetic x equals display uh, displacement y equals highway okay so up to this point it looks exactly the same as what we had before but then we are saying plus facet wrap tilde class right so now we are saying i want facets in uh, ggplot Facet is a way to plot subsets uh, in different plots, right? Like we did here. Subsets of the data, in this case by class, in different plots. That's what a facet is. So facet wrap is, we are saying generate many facets and just wrap them around. And we are saying it, to create facets based on what variable, right? Because here we have just said x and y. Right, so at this point we only said uh, the two aesthetics x and y. 
right? We have not told it to split up the data by any particular variable. This is where we are saying split it up by class, the tilde class. That's just the way in which you specify the variable on which you want to create the facets. And then we are telling it, I want you to have two rows in the output. Okay, so it's got one row and then it's got the second row. I could have said n row equals three or I could have said left out n row altogether in which case it would determine based on the available space and so on. Okay, how many rows of data to have? Okay, or I could have said n call and it would have determined the number of rows. Okay, so that's how uh, you do a facet wrap in uh, RStudio, in, in uh, ggplot.